Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the installation of a standard DMTFB flow meter. So to begin, open the case, two screws. On the inside, we have to make some connections. So first of all, your transducers both up and downstream uh, will go into these ports here. Uh, and you also need to power the unit. Now you can power it either with 24 volt DC through this one here, or you can use standard mains power and get an electrician to connect that up into here. So your transducers, first of all, <coughs> you'll have a, a cable like this. So you'll see that says XDCR DN. Now that's your downstream cable. So this will go onto XDCR DN and your other cable will be for your upstream. So we just follow these colors here. So red is positive, blue is negative, and black is ground. Okay, now connecting through your waterproof grommets and also through here. Okay, so now that's fed through and you can just tighten these up. A little loose for now so I can move it still. And when I tighten up fully, it'll be solid. Okay, so now you can remove the connector and we just basically need to insert the wires into here and tighten up the screws. So I'll do that now. Okay, so now my transducers are installed into the flow meter. So now you'll see that these are solidly installed and tight and there's a waterproof seal. These are now clipped into place and in the right order as per shown on here. Next thing, um, you could connect either your power. Okay, so uh, in my example, I'm just going to use 24 volt DC. Uh, that will just be a case of um, connecting your power up positive and negative and the same, uh, install it through one of the spare grommets. Okay, so now I'm just going to run through the setting and the parameters. Uh, this is our demo flow meter now. Um, so I'm just going to do an installation on, on this pipe here, and I'll show you setting of the parameters. So first of all, getting through the menus, you use the up and down arrows. Um, so you'll see as I press down, the menu number in the top left is increasing, and up goes the other way. Uh, or the other way you can get to a menu is by pressing menu and then type the menu number. So if I want menu 11, menu 11, and it goes to menu 11. Menu 11 is the first one we need to set the parameter for. Um, okay, so it asks for the outer diameter of the pipe. In this case, the pipe is 90 millimeters, but to set it, I just press enter, type 90, and press enter again. Next one, menu 12, is the wall thickness of the pipe. Uh, so in this case, I've got 5.6 millimeters wall thickness. Enter, uh, and move on to the next one. The inner diameter is calculated from those two previous values entered. Uh, now your pipe material, in this case I have a carbon steel pipe, um, but you can change this, press enter, and you can scroll through uh, pre-programmed materials or if your one's not in that list just select other and you'll see on menu 15 you can manually type the sound speed of your material uh, which you can usually find online or you might know it but in this case i'm going to select carbon steel uh, now liner if you have a liner in your pipe you'll also need to enter it uh, here but in this case there's no liner so I'll select no liner fluid type uh, again similar to before you just select uh, what's in your pipe in this case I have water um, but changing it is the same you just scroll through use one of the uh, ones that are pre-programmed or you can select other other and it unlocks the next menu in which you can manually type in the sound speed of your fluid. But I'll select water. Okay, now your transducer type. In my case, I'm using standard M. 
but if you have purchased a different set of transducers for different size pipes, uh, just change that here as well. So I'll select standard M. Mounting method, uh, V is the most common. Uh, there are other mounting methods depending uh, what you're doing. V is what I'll be using in this case. And your spacing uh, is then shown on menu 25. So this is the space that we need to set the transducers apart. Okay, so now on to installation of the transducers. You'll see on my pipe, I've got a clean section. Uh, it's been sanded down to bare metal. So if you have any paint or oxidization, rust or anything like that, make sure you sand it down to bare metal. Uh, otherwise you may have signal issues. Now, um, in this case, uh, I'm gonna use a mounting frame. Uh, it's the easiest method in my opinion for mounting of transducers, but uh, depends what you've got or purchased. Now, the transducers, you just need to put some, some grease. This is a uh, super lube that we use. Application of the grease is basically uh, something like that. Just a bead on the sensing surface here. And now we just need to put them onto the pipe in the correct order. So you'll see uh, I've got the downstream. Uh, in this case, the flow is going this way. So this side is downstream. So I'll just insert the transducer and tighten it down. Okay, now you want the transducer tight and solid so it doesn't move, uh, but you don't want it too tight that you're pushing all the grease out. A little bit coming out the side is, is fine, but we don't want to get it all out. Uh, okay, then I'll do the other transducer. Um, so again, just slide it into position. Line it up to the front and tighten it down. Okay, so now that the transducers are installed, uh, we move back to the unit. Now there's a few things we need to check to make sure everything is correct. Uh, namely, this Q value uh, on menu one. So on menu one, it shows this Q value. Now you want to make sure that this value is 60 or higher. Now if it is lower than 60, uh, then you should go back and recheck your installation. Make sure you've got plenty of grease on there. Uh, make sure there's no rust on the pipe, uh, make sure the pipe is full. It's basically saying that the, the signal quality coming through uh, is, is not good if it's less than 60. Uh, so we're looking okay here. Uh, the other value we want to check is over on menu 90. Uh, sorry, I mean 91. Uh, and that's this percentage value. So you want this in the range of 97 to 103%. Uh, now I'm sitting right there at near 100%, so uh, that is, is good. That's what we want to see. So now back on menu one, you'll see now uh, it's displaying the flow rate, uh, which is here, 315, 314 liters per minute, thereabouts. Uh, and this one at the top is the totalized flow. Now, um, these figures are customizable. So liters per minute, they could be changed to, um, you know, another value if you wanted it to. I'll show you setting that. Uh, let's have a look. So here you see on menu 31, the flow rate unit, um, it's set to liters per minute. And also uh, your totalizer units can be set. Um, so. If I wanted to change this to liters, for example, back on menu one, now the total is gradually increasing. The totalizer can also be reset fairly simply. Uh, I'll find where that menu is. Totalizer, reset. Okay, so that's menu 37. Just press enter, totalizer, reset, change it to yes change it to all. It says reset finished and back on menu one you see that totalizer at the top has reset to zero and gradually increasing again. And that's it.
Finished insulation, all good. Thanks.